In the last two months, we have seen two generative AI startups basically collapse, and today I'm going to talk about why. Inflection AI has folded their core business, and their top leadership, including CEO Mustafa Suleiman, have fled to Microsoft. Meanwhile, Stability AI has had oodles of financial challenges, and their CEO, Ahmad, quit to go build decentralized AI. And I mean, I hate to say it, but it does seem like the stability of the these AI startups has reached an inflection point. But with the collapse of incredibly well-funded AI startups like this, where does this leave us? What can founders in the space learn? And what does this mean for the future of generative AI? Let's find out. Okay, first things first, what happened to Inflection AI and Stability AI? Inflection AI is a generative AI startup that is most famous for its chatbot Pi, which is intended to be a generative AI assistant. Their goal was to create multiple assistants for you, say in different areas like marketing or administrative work or sales and have them all know everything about you that all the other chatbots learned instead of keeping it all separate. And this in theory was going to make all of the chatbots work for you better because it would know what your preferences were in different areas. It was founded in 2022 by Mustafa Suleiman, Karen Sunyan, and the legendary nicest PayPal mafia bro, Reid Hoffman. And like Anthropic, it was founded as a public benefit company. And while they raised $1.3 billion back in 2023, their revenue has not been nearly as competitive as their other competitors. And on top of that, their investors included a lot of the usual suspects and Microsoft. And the app itself was good, but not amazing, and certainly was not comparable to things like ChatGPT4 or Anthropic's Claude or Google's Gemini and so many more. So by March of 2024, Inflection AI closed the core part of their business and the vast majority of the team leadership left to go join Microsoft, including the CEO, Mustafa Suleiman, who is now the CEO of Microsoft AI, which yes, is basically the same deal that Sam Altman almost got during OpenAI's nonprofit board's failed coup. Meanwhile, our favorite PayPal mafia bro, Reid Hoffman, is staying behind and bringing on a new CEO, a guy named Sean White, not the flying tomato, to try to figure out how to pivot and make Inflection AI successful. But despite our nicest PayPal mafia bros' best attempts, it is unclear whether Inflection AI is going to be able to proceed and is essentially a shell of its former self. Meanwhile, Stability AI's situation is a wee bit shaky. Stability AI is a generative AI company that is most famous for their tool Stable Diff Fusion, which is basically a mid-journey or OpenAI's Dolly competitor. It's a text-to-image generator. They were founded in 2019 by Imad Mustak and raised hundreds of millions of dollars in fundraising, no, not billions, and primarily worked with regular VC investors with the exception of Intel. They have been insistent on being open source and independent. And unlike Inflection AI, Stability AI's Stable Diffusion seems to have gotten way more user traction, but their business model has remained similarly unimpressive. But like Inflection AI, or really all of these startups, they were basically hemorrhaging money. Again, it costs a ton of money uh, when it comes to electrical power and compute power in order to run these LLMs. Meanwhile, several of the core leadership of Stability AI left the company and there were all sorts of rumblings and rumors about uh, poor leadership by Imad, including everything from being not focused to changing what the company was doing all the time to poor allocation of funds. The AI and that the board members did not force him out because he wanted to work on decentralized AI, which much of the internet who follows these things found a wee bit suspicious. Now Stability AI's future is in flux with new leadership, not a lot of funds, and no buyers. They laid off 10% of the company and are doing their best to come up with new business models. Now, can either of these companies make the pivot needed in order to survive? Maybe, but I would say they are both in a 
pretty nasty spot. And most importantly, I would say they have lost their momentum, which is really what you need if you're trying to succeed in AI right now. But here's the real question. Why haven't any larger companies tried to buy out Stability AI? See, unlike Inflection AI, Stability AI had a really impressive LLM and a lot of traction when it came to users. Wouldn't selling a company that maybe is losing money but still has really valuable IP be a good idea for big tech companies who are trying to win in this race? And wouldn't that be a preferred outcome for the founders and investors of Stability AI? And also, why didn't Microsoft simply purchase Inflection AI rather than just hiring the entire company leadership minus Reid Hoffman? Isn't that basically the same thing? Well, as I said in my last video, my girl Lena Khan is back with the Federal Trade Commission and is eyeing all of these AI startups and big tech companies like an hawk trying to prevent major AI monopolies. They are rightly concerned about big tech potentially trying to buy out all of these different AI startups, uh, see the last decade of big tech buying out social media companies and every other type of company for reference. And they're trying to prevent that from happening to AI because they don't want a singular company making AI products for the entire world. They would like to see competition and they would like to see different types of companies competing so that we don't run into a single monopoly or even just a handful of monopolies, right? But is this strategy of pressuring big tech companies from buying smaller AI startups like this actually good for competition? And I would say in theory, yes, but in practice in this specific environment right now, I don't know that it's actually working. The unintended consequences of the actions of the FTC is that they are making it harder for st failing startups like Inflection AI to get a lifeline if they are clear that they're going to fail. And I think for the most part, this strategy, especially in different industries, makes a lot of sense, or even for the social media era of startups and big tech, it could make sense because it does prevent, you know, these mega monopolies from occurring, just even the simple threat of potential litigation. But at the same time, one of the best things that could happen to a failing startup is to get acquired. Having startups get acquired by bigger companies helps keep employees employed, so less unemployment. It allows good work that was created by these startups to continue to exist typically in the world, or at least in theory it does. And the exit money from sales like these can be life-changing to founders or employees who actually worked at these startups. However, big tech has been abusing this practice for the last decade and buying out their competitors and making it so that founders who want to scale even a miniature competitor in their spaces have basically been unable to exist. Think Clubhouse or Snapchat turning down offers from the big tech giants and having their concepts being blatantly stolen from them and integrated into larger social media apps. That said, this situation feels different in one fundamental way, which is that it is so expensive to build large language models, right? It takes so much electricity, it creates so much compute time, it takes an intensive amount of work with super, super niche skills in the world to build these types of models that it's almost inconceivable for smaller startups to even make the attempts to try to compete with these giants. The bar of entry is so high, and so if you want to even try to be competitive, it's a massive, massive risk. And if the potential lifeline of not having an 
exit strategy if your company does fail and letting all of these team members down. It's going to be harder to get team members. It's going to be harder to get funding and it's going to be harder for any of these startups to even possibly make it right when it comes to building, say, a new social media platform the hard barriers that you have to get around is getting people onto your app, but actually building it is challenging, but not impossible. But when it comes to generative AI, what's concerning to me is it is already so structurally challenging to build a company like this that I worry that the FTC putting pressure on big tech companies to force them to not buy out startups that are very clearly failing is going to make it so that founders are not going to want to try. Now, of course, there's always going to be people who are going to want to try, but if somebody is, you know, good at doing math and they're like, all right, I'm statistically unlikely to succeed in this venture, even if I do have the skills and the network and I want to be able to try to compete with OpenAI. So again, we don't have a certain monopoly situation. You see what I'm getting at? I'm concerned that the FTC's actions, though extremely well-intentioned and I think extremely advisable, are also helping possibly to contribute to a monopolistic situation. None of these situations are easy. There's no easy solution for all of this. And so my advice to Lena Khan, uh, my fave, of course, is, you know, tread with caution, tread aggressively, like don't hold back, but also, Make sure to adapt and make sure that we don't have unintended consequences because of this weird legal situation, right? Right. Because like we talked about in my last video, there's even a question if a company like Anthropic, which has gotten billions of dollars in funding, is going to be able to compete with OpenAI or going to be able to compete with like Google, right? And so if we're making it so that the chance of success for founders is minuscule, it's possible that we're gonna stop having founders even try, which is crazy because for a lot of these startups, uh, if they were in any other field, they would be considered successes. But what's different here is just on paper in comparison to their competitors, they, they, you know, they look like boulders compared to planets or galaxies. So while I heavily applaud the FTC and the government for actually trying to do something productive to try to prevent monopolies in this space after doing literally nothing for the last 20 years, at the same time, I am worried that the actions could backfire themselves. Okay guys, to wrap it up, what do I think? Honestly, in this situation, I think Stability AI and Inflection AI ran into the same problems that frankly, most startups run into, which is they spent too much money and did not earn enough money. And or they didn't necessarily have a compelling enough problem to solve. These are incredibly common problems that startups across the board have. But what's interesting about the AI space is that because there's so much upfront investor money or big tech money being thrown at these startups super early on, we are seeing everything moving faster than it would on a normal world, right? But frankly, this is pretty normal in Silicon Valley and, and is not something to necessarily be frowned upon. We still want founders to take risks, right? We still want people to try to build new technologies, to try to build new companies. There's nothing wrong with failure or the founders who are unable to succeed, especially if they give it their best shot with the resources that they had on hand. But another thing that struck me about Stability AI's situation in particular was the amount of bashing that Imad got for leaving the company. There's this big mythos in Silicon Valley in general about the super startup founder who brought the company into being a Fortune 10 company, right? Like think Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or even Steve Jobs about being the superhero founder who takes the startup from the very beginning and scales it all the way to the very top, right? It's um, very glorified. But the reality is not every founder, frankly, I would say most founders are not necessarily equipped or want to scale their companies into infinity. And I know a lot of people are giving Imad a lot of crap about this. And while I'm skeptical of decentralized AI, 
I really resonated with what he said in this interview. And I, I've heard you say recently, you know, that you view yourself more as a founder and strategist than a CEO. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think everyone's got their own skill sets, right? So I'm particularly great at taking creatives, uh, developers, researchers, others, and achieving their full potential and designing systems. But I should not be dealing with, you know, HR and operations and business development and other elements. There are far pe better people than me to do that. Yeah, I mean, I've um, had calls for me to step down as CEO since the, well, since 2022, <laughs> you know? But I always thought, you know, what's best for the company and the mission? And where I look at the world right now, there's a few things. A, the company has momentum, it has spread, it's turning into a business. Like last year I said, let's not enter into large revenue contracts because the technology isn't mature yet and our processes aren't mature yet and you have to deliver. So we did a lot of experimental things we were setting up and again now it's ramping on a business side. On a technology side, the technology is maturing. At the end of the day, if you look at what happened to Ahmad while building Stability AI, he started building in 2019 before this massive bubble, right? And, you know, it was the type of thing where he enjoyed building the product and building the language models and testing out different things and whatever. But once the company actually started to take off, his job became much more of a management job of managing people or, you know, not necessarily the things that he liked to do. And so I think overall we should be giving, I don't know, more grace, more wiggle room and applauding people who realize when it is time to step down or take a step aside and let the company do what it's doing. Granted in stability AI situation, I don't know how much of that is gonna be salvageable, but I think it is good that Imad recognized in himself that it was time to do whatever the next thing is and to make sure to lean into his strengths. So if you're building your own startup, especially in AI, make sure to like, before things get crazy, to write out an exit plan, right? Write out, if my company becomes so successful that I'm no longer doing the things I like, I would like to do this. Or I would like to sell my company if it's like this. Or I would like, to become the president of the company and just work on special projects and not be the CEO, right? Having a plan ahead of time, even if you decide to change your mind, is something that can be really, really helpful for when you reach the moment where things are so chaotic that your brain is like a total mess. It's like a total fog. And also, friendly reminder to have your finances in order. Remember, running businesses is all about not spending more money than you have. And sure, venture investment is great, but if you're gonna take that venture money, make sure that you're gonna make enough money to make it to the next level because not doing that is going to put you on a really dangerous hamster wheel. And I can't tell you how many startups who are doing really good work could have become much bigger successes if they just, you know, had a better business model or just add their shit together. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. My name is Carolyn Holden. I have spent the last seven years working in startups, venture capital, and tech. And now I run this YouTube show where I talk about generative AI and startups and all sorts of shenanigans. Apologies for the delay in this video coming out. I'm trying to be a little bit better about that. And I have some really fun videos planned, including some shorts. So be sure to check that out. Like, comment, subscribe, or ring the bell. That's gonna be the best way for you to see whenever I am posting my next video. Thank you so much again, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!